I'm here with my grandma and her mahjong group. Can I have all of your names? Anne. I'm your grandmother. Yes, you are. <laughs> Be Wayne. Okay. Sure. Gina. Hey, sure. Benny. You want to pass on? No. Yeah, okay. Are you here? Okay. Yeah. 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 Rachel. I think this is going to be warmer. Yeah. And Jean. And Jean. Right. Do you need to spell B. Wayne? Oh, uh, yes. B <coughs> as in boy. Yep. E. No, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is one word. I'll put it here. Yeah. So, where, if you guys were born in the U.S., just say that. If you were born in another country, can you say that country? American. Um, American in the U.S. Yeah. Does West Virginia count as another country? <laughs> <laughs> I think Arkansas does. Yeah, Arkansas. 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 Gina was born in England. England. So Gina was born in England. Mm -hmm. right. I was hatched someplace. Okay, this one. <laughs> This one is, uh, this is a required question. How old are you guys? I'm 80. You're 80. Okay. How 75 I am. 76. 74. 70. 80. 69. 66. Oh, yeah. There's one person old. There are a couple of people older than me here. They didn't say a word. I, I said, I said, if you not don't feel comfortable, <laughs> oh, you okay. don't have to. Oh, okay. I didn't hear that. Okay. Just, we didn't, none just, of us heard that. So part. the oldest is 80 and the youngest is 66? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Throw her out. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any significant historical events that affected you personally? as well? The depression, probably. The Great Depression. The Great Depression. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? The summer of love. Affected us personally or just personally. emotionally? Yeah, either way. Well, John F. Kennedy's. John F. Kennedy's assassination. For me, it was Martin Luther King. Yeah. For me, it was Paul Holocaust. It was who? Holocaust. Why do you call it Holocaust? That's that's right. That's about the hippie years. That's what the big summer of love. Yeah, it's the, they're yeah. celebrating fifty. Did that affect you negatively or positively? Positively. That's I didn't smoke that little stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Didn't smoke that little and stuff. And take those little tablets. And okay, what good were you so in? That <laughs> is, so and we were what well, part of that. those event, events? Like, what, did the hippies affect you personally? Or I what wanted to go to San personally? Francisco. You wanted to. And I never could do anything. So what part of it, what aspects of the Great Depression really? The Great Depression affected us because people didn't have jobs, people didn't have money, but my parents always had jobs. But um, they became, I think, super cautious about spending their money because you never knew whether you, whether something like this, if it happened once, why couldn't it happen again? again? You know, I think that was a fear of people who lived through that time. Are there any historical events that happened like when you guys were very young and did this affect you in any way? Well, well I was born. I was born a few weeks before Pearl Harbor. Oh, you know, mm -hmm. I was a youngster. I mean, I was very young when Pearl Harbor happened, but I remember the day because we were supposed to be taken out in a sled in December in Illinois, and we didn't go because there was the announcement on the radio. December 6th, right? 7th. 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 1945. 43? 40, something in there. I think what? it was like 41. 41. We were little. We were very little. 41. Yeah. <coughs> John F. Kennedy, I was in school when they announced that. I, I, I was uh, handling the phones in the school I was working in um, as a substitute teacher, and sometimes I answer the phone, and I remember getting a phone call that he had been killed, mm -hmm. and they, I had to tell whoever was in charge, I don't remember who, but I know they closed the school and we all went home and everybody, no matter who they were, everybody went to a church. 
Yeah. Whatever the nearest church was. For John F. Kennedy? For John F. Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. I was working. I'm a nurse. I was a nurse. <laughs> and I was in a patient's room, and I think I was giving a bath, maybe. And the news came down, and I was just devastated. But I remember there was a lady there that practically was skipping down the hall. Because he had been killed? Yeah. No. I guess she was a Republican of with bad, bad thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'll never look at that. Oh, that would be, be devastating. <laughs> yeah. 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 Once you guys were old enough to understand that bad things would happen and people, did any other historical events happen when you guys were a little older than like, your adult? Well, something that didn't happen to me personally <coughs> earlier, but I do have a sister-in-law who's Japanese, and her family lost everything mm -hmm. and were put in an internment camp, the one here in California. And, you know, they lost everything. And, and our government did it to them. And they were American citizens. 110 Born in Hawaii. Them, I think. Yeah. And they were in Manzanar. Yeah. Yeah. Manzanar. Yeah. Yeah. Manzanar. Do you, on, the, on the lighter side, do you have any interesting or happy memories of your childhood? Divorce? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I remember when we got television. Mm -hmm. Which yes, was yes. fan. How, how old were you when you got television? Black and white. Yeah, it was black and white. <laughs> black tele white. And my how father, my father put a quarter meter on the television <laughs> to pay for it, <laughs> but to also keep us from looking at it all the time. <laughs> so you put a quarter in it, and you get a half hour. And then when your half hour was up, the television would go off. That's actually a good idea. <laughs> And that was also our babysitter, because when they went out, they'd give us 75 cents, and that was an hour and a half. And after that, we were supposed to go to bed. Yeah, yeah. I was 11 when we first got a black point. So I'm in eighth grade, and what was your guys' eighth grade year like? Mine? Yeah, year oh, 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 oh. in the eighth grade, um, oh, I um, was the second tallest girl in the class. Susan Cummins was the tallest one. Yeah. And, and I don't know, but it was years that I was second to the last in line. She was last in line. And the eighth grade at the time, I think, is when I started the first time going to the first time the first time and the eighth grade, I think, is when I started uh, playing the violin. Going to high school? That's where I, that's when I, First, we took music classes, and the teacher said, do you play an instrument? And I said, no. He said, would you like to play one? And I saw, the only person I knew who played an instrument was my Uncle John. And he didn't know how to read music. He played gypsy music, because I guess there was gypsy blood in the family. I don't know. But anyway, um, that's when I started playing the violin. Anybody else have any interest? From eighth grade or anywhere when around? when we when we were in middle school, that was seventh and eighth grade for us. The girls took home so ec, and I didn't want to take home ec, so I took print shop, <laughs> and I learned to set type. And you set type upside down and backwards. Mm -hmm. So I learned to read things that were upside down <laughs> and backwards. So in my working life. <laughs> Years later, people would have papers on their desk that I wasn't supposed to see, you could read but I could read them because it were upside down and backwards. So you know what this says then? What? Well, this just put my glasses on to see. Yeah, my name. Yes. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. you. I'm gonna be careful with my name. <laughs> That's why we do the interview so we can learn things. I went to uh, eighth grade in two different states, uh, West Virginia and Detroit. Michigan. I was in Detroit, Michigan, and three different schools, two in Detroit and one. My mother moved a lot. Yeah. And that was not easy. No, no it was very hard. Very yeah. hard. I think we were considered, I find out, in this first generation, second generation, feminine, second wave. I think. Oh yeah, we're called. Cool. Now I only learned that from. Um, oh really? Did yeah. you know we were feminists? Yeah. I thought that. Yeah, I guess so. So, am I the only one that was born in Pasadena? Because you're all my life. So, <laughs> so, so, how about we were talking about yeah. historical events that happened? Did you guys 
have any like direct relation to anything that happened to them? Or did you have like relatives who fought in the war? My dad fought in World War II. Your dad fought in World War II? My uncle. Oh, was he in the mm -hmm. army or? He was in, well, at that time it was the army, but he was in what would be called the Air Force now. Air Force. He was in the bomber. He was a gunner, a uh, uh, bomber, uh, over uh, <coughs> Europe and Germany and France. Did he survive? Yes, he did. But it's interesting. There was a, a boy uh, that went ahead of him, and he didn't survive. And they were all boys. Yeah, they were all boys. Mm -hmm. How old was he when he got drafted? He didn't get drafted. Well, he, he enlisted. All these. Oh, really? How much he enlisted? Is that what you think? Yeah, I think no, so. Some of them were drafted. 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 I was born when he was in the service. Was he 18? Oh, he was over 18. My dad was in the Navy. Your dad was in the Navy? What was he? I would say he was in his 20s. He was in his 20s. He was. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember. He was born in 21, so how old would he have been? We would have been just in his 20s. He would have been just in his 20s. Even if you're not in the military, he would have been in the military. 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 Was in three concentration camps. Three mm -hmm. uh, She's the only one besides my father who survived. Well, my dad and his parents. Uh, they were Polish. My, grandma, okay. my grandparents were uh, in the Warsaw ghetto. Mm -hmm. So he didn't come. Um, and my, my father's brother um, was probably in the forest. He was probably caught by the Nazis and the dogs. World War I. But my aunt survived. So they, they ran away? My aunt, well, my uncle was in the forest, but we got, they had dogs and that would kill the other people and they sniffed them out and killed them. My aunt survived. Uh, six years. She, she survived six years. Six years in the forest? In no, concentration camps. Starting, starting with Alzheimer's and end up in Birkenau. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and, and it's, it's it's longer longer than than I don't know if you actually. Yes, yeah. she was in the four. Mm -hmm. Four mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, so that said, played a big part in, in, in my upbringing. So. My grandfather came from Italy to escape Mussolini. His family, the family sent him. Was he a young boy then? Was he young? When yeah. He, uh, yeah, and then, wrong. yeah, but yes, there's not the patient. The next question, which is one of the craziest experiences you guys have had. Craziest? Craziest, oh, craziest okay. experiences you guys Crazy. Had. I got yes. married. That was my Crazy. I think for me, the highlight of my life was my three children. And then after that, we were kids. I think that was the highlight of my Yeah, highlight of grandkids, yeah. <coughs> well, I didn't get grandkids yet. I was seeing my first grandson born. I was in the delivery room when he was delivered, um, and they put him in that little bed, and I think he said something, mm -hmm. and he turned his head toward me. And the nurse oh. said, he recognizes your voice. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he had me around at my finger right then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what, you? Ever since. what was your craziest experience? I really don't know. Um, I guess not. Cra there were there were no crazy experiences. Uh, no, but but it was liberating to. Um, go to school, not go away to school, I wasn't allowed to go away, but I think just the fact of going to school, to college, and learning, and being exposed to the things that, to which I was exposed, was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I think being in this Mahjong group is probably the craziest thing. 
funny. <laughs> yes, we have this. And meeting all yes. these wonderful, funny, and interesting. Well, actually, that was that was one of my questions. Is actually, what is mahjong? Can you explain it to me? <laughs> It's a game of people that are of luck and uh, and uh, it's an ancient game. It's a Chinese it's, game. It's, it was originated. It in China. originated in China. Yeah. And we'll you guys playing later. We'll hard. We'll film you guys playing later. Okay. And actually, the American version mm-hmm. that that started between. in the Jewish community. Yes. Right. Yep. Well, and, and um, it did. started in the Jewish community because the white Russians went to China, the Chinese ladies taught them how to play, and then when they left Russia, I mean when they left China, and many of them came to the east, to the west, they brought the game with them. Not only that, but Chinatown and the parts of Manhattan that were populated by Jewish people were very close to one another, and yes. somehow uh, the game, you know, went from one culture to the other That's and the Jewish mm-hmm. and Jewish women loved it. Well they didn't the Jewish women didn't have anywhere to go when they were in China. But the they were taught to play the game there. Oh. So then they brought it with them. Actually, yeah, really which is interesting. Yeah, it's one of the histories of it. Mm-hmm. So I, mean, I thought they actually learned here. Mm-hmm. I thought well, here, it's here probably China. both. Probably a little. This is a different game. The Chinese. Yeah, the game. Chinese American and the American games. game are slightly different. They both play with the tiles, but us, the us tiles jokers are need, different. Us too. Americans uh-huh. need jokers. Yeah, <laughs> the Chinese don't have jokers. And a card. <laughs> so this is more of a well, a question about current events that are happening. What is your stance on Donald Trump? What do you stand? Nobody's going to stand. What do you think? Nobody's going to stand up. What do you guys think about Donald Trump? Not crazy. Not, not, not like much of him. I, uh, don't, <laughs> I don't think there's anybody here that is happy with what wants to make our country look like. We look like we're really stupid people. I resent that there's no civil civility. I don't like the way people talk to each other. And I think he... I think he enables people who want to divide us rather than unite us. And some of us have spent a long time trying to be good American citizens and do everything that we thought was appropriate. And to have him come along and... Ruin it for everybody not only ruin it, but make us look very stupid in the eyes of the world. I thought we were the shining beacon on the hill, and it looks like we are a bunch of rabble-rousing, stupid people who don't believe in doing what is right. Well, he's less racist than anybody you ever knew. (laughs) <laughs> sarcasm. Yes, sarcasm. Yes, sarcasm. Yes, sarcasm. That's what he said. He's about. saying the opposite. Yeah. Right. right. I well, think he I didn't like think he was going to be president. I think he just did it as a joke. Yeah. I don't like the way it's polarized people. Yeah. Well, it's really not good for this country. It's just it's splitting the nation. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's what I mean. Part. People right. are becoming um, well polarizing against each other and and I I see the freedom of speech kind of disappearing because nobody wants to listen anymore. Yeah, that's how I see it. Well that that was all the questions that I have. Thank you guys for your time. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We're gonna play three handed now. One, two, three, four, five, no, six, I thought you seven. were playing. And he's I'm filming now. Oh. Wait. He really needs a, he needs to re- a fr- refresher, right, to remind him how to yeah. play. It's the last time you played was at my house. Jean was there. Remember that? Most of you guys were there. Yeah, we were there. And you said, can I play? And, and Grandpa and played. You and, and you and... There. 
angry or about four yeah. or five. I played when, when I was like nine. Yeah, but remember. you learned when you were younger than that. Yeah. No. I was there. Right. Okay. Okay.